Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. We're here at 13 Lincoln Court? Yes. At, with Minuteman Press, and we are here with, we're here with Rita Siprak weil who is the owner of yes. Minuteman Press here in Annapolis. And you guys have recently relocated here. You used to be up the road a little bit, right? We used to be located at uh, 111 Chincapin Round Road, okay. just like two blocks up. Uh, and we've been in this location on uh, Lincoln Court for just over a year. And previous to Chincapin, we were down on West Street where they put the bank in. Okay. 60 West Street, and we were there for over 30 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, for those that don't know where Lincoln Court is, this is right off of Chinkapin Round Road. If you're coming off of Forest Drive or 665, it's uh, First Street on the right. Mm-hmm. And you've got the, there's a rehab place here. There's uh, kicked up fitnesses back in here yeah. as well. Budget blinds. We usually tell people it's budget blinds and the laundromat. And there's a and there's a there's a dog place here too. Oh, there, there is. Boy, they're busy. <laughs> and I take a walk every day, six times a day, uh, with my Fitbit, and uh, I get to see all the puppies. All the puppies and, out for the yeah. walks and everything oh, else. Yeah, they do trainings. I'm I'm so sad. My mechanic retired. It used to be Mr. Green on the far side, off of I guess Lincoln Drive yeah. on the very corner. And he retired, and he he was the best. But um, hung it up, and now now that's I've right. moved on. But. Now you have to find a new one. That's true. Well, we're here not to talk about Mr. Green and uh, automotive repair or dogs walking the streets. We're here to talk about Miniman Press, which is a great locally owned business that has been around, obviously, as Rita has said, for years. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, how did you get into the printing business? Mm, I have, like, are you like a direct descendant of Ben Franklin no, or something like no, that? No, not, not even close. <laughs> I have, I have uh, no background in printing at all. Uh, I was a healthcare consultant for the Department of Defense. And so I would commute down to Crystal City five days a week and uh, leave the house at five in the morning and then leave the the office at four to make it back and pick up my son from daycare. So my husband would drop him off at daycare. I would leave and come and pick him up. So what's the problem with that? Yeah, (laughs) that's the way a lot of people live. Um, You know, we looked a couple of times to move down to Virginia so it would be more convenient for me. But it's really hard to leave Annapolis. Annapolis is a great city. We have everything. It it really it really is. I mean, we've got the the water, the lifestyle. It's a little bit expensive to live here, but that's um, you know it's the trade off. But Northern Virginia is just as expensive, even more. And um, we looked like three different times because my husband's like, "Come on, this is crazy," and it's like, "Oh, I just don't like it." And you know, granted, getting up at five in the morning has its drawbacks, but everybody who was on the road at that time, they knew what they were doing. We were all oh, right, going right. really fast. <laughs> yeah. So I loved my job down there, um, helping the military set up their um, third-party collection program for health insurance. Um, had some great uh, bosses, and then I got a boss that I just didn't mesh with. And it was getting close. We'd had that contract for 15 years, which is really unusual to have a government contract for that long. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, I don't think they're going to award it to us again. I think it's time to move on. And so that was right around 9-11. And um, I actually had people working at the Pentagon um, when, when we had the, the strike mm-hmm. there. So it was, it was scary. My husband... Uh, took off, uh, finished one consulting job, was taking the summer off, and then was going to start looking for another job in the fall. And then 9-11 happened, and nobody was really hiring because none of us knew what was going to happen next. And so we started looking around for a business to buy. He came across this, and he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd be interested in running this. And I said, I would. And so he, he, we bought it. He ran it for the first two years while I, um, I got a new contract at, 
you know, where I was, which was exciting. So I did that for two years, and then I quit, and then I came and started running this. Why did you look to buy a business as opposed to going to work for somebody else? You know, in hindsight, maybe I should have done that. Certainly, I, I would have made more money. <laughs> Well, 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 for the business ownership. Yes, that's business ownership. You get paid last. Um, I would have been paid more money, but um, I had some, I had a lot of wonderful years where I just was more mobile. I mean, I had a great staff, and so if I wanted to take a long weekend, that that was nothing. It, you know, it was fine. Nobody even missed me. And my son at the time was uh, getting into the teenage years and uh, no longer had daycare. Right. So needed somebody around town a little bit more. So I, I really enjoyed it. And then my husband went off and purchased a, a computer business. He was he purchased Annapolis Computers. And so we were two small business owners um, here in Annapolis. Minuteman Press is a franchise. It is. And it's the number one printing franchise in the world. There you go. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, and it's won the... Uh, Inc. Magazine top franchise, um, in, I think in printing, um, like 22 years in a row or, or something like that. Yeah. Well, one thing I've mentioned, and, and I, I do want to keep drilling it in on these these podcasts that we're doing with the local businesses, is that I don't have a whole lot of room in my heart for the Best Buys and the, the Nordstrom's and the, the Home Depot's and everything else of the world, just because they are these big corporate behemoths that... The bulk of the money, yes, it does go to local people that are working there, but the bulk of the money does go out of town to wherever mm-hmm. their headquarters are, whether it's in Atlanta or Minnesota. With a franchise, is totally different. Right. Okay? I mean, you, you have made a decision to pay a big corporation mm-hmm. for the rights of their names, okay? But you are salt of the earth in Annapolis. You are right here. You're, when, you know, when you pay yourself last, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're taking that paycheck and you're spending it at Sin from Terrace or wherever yeah. you're wherever you're eating, you're shopping locally, and you're employing local people to do do the work here. Yes. So, and that that's a real big difference that a lot of people don't understand about franchises. They think that oh yeah, the the big old Minuteman owns this, and that's not the case. No, they're all individually owned. They all have their own look. We all have our own pricing and our own procedures. We get a lot of vendor suggestions from corporate. We get. Um, operations ideas processes that they recommend to sure. us they help with the website um, there are you've got you've got your logo which is in, yes. you know recognized worldwide yes and i mean essentially you're paying them for marketing yes it's it's a marketing expense yeah. to you as a business owner yeah. which, there I, um, I mean i've obviously not been exposed to a franchise before this but now that I am in the franchise world and I hear other people who have different franchises, I'm really impressed with uh, Minuteman Press and, and what they do. They're very supportive. Well, as, as with any franchise, though, they've got it, they've got it down. I've jokingly said yes. that McDonald's could put a restaurant on four corners of one intersection. They would all do fine. Yeah. And when I used, to own, I used to own a travel agency franchise, I used to tell my clients, I said, if you're ever getting hungry for some American food and you're someplace in some far-flung place, find a McDonald's, okay? That Big Mac is going to taste the same in Hong Kong and Shanghai and yeah. London as it is going to taste right down here on West Street. Yeah. And, you know, there's something to be said said about that. You said that the different franchises have different, you know, pricing and products and everything else. What mm-hmm. What is your core product here? Um, we're really business to business. Um, we help other small businesses get their marketing message out to their customers or their potential customers. Um, anything that they need their logo on, um, be it apparel or binders or, um, you know, rack cards, you know, any of those kind of items is what we would help them So you So you do more than just printing. You said apparel and binders and whatnot. So, I mean, yeah. I... Yeah, right now um, we call it a whip work in progress. We have uh, 153 inch binders we're doing for a company. Um, we have face masks that we're doing for somebody. Uh, we have a heat press in the back here, so we press those ourselves. We have rack cards. We have um, letterhead that we're doing. We do a lot of envelopes. 
um, we have a press. We have two presses mm -hmm. here. Um, and so we do a lot of envelopes uh, in-house because that is something that it is harder for people to do on the little, you know, inexpensive printers that they, right. they have. Now, do you get into the whole mailing thing, too? Or? We do. Um, we do every door direct mail, which is a great way to get your message out to I'm, neighborhoods. I'm a huge believer in indirect mail. Yeah. And I, I also, I, a lot of people talk about digital advertising and whatnot. I, I'm also a firm believer in um, email marketing as far as the... It has to all mesh. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, your message has to be consistent in the way it's going out. And it needs to go out on a variety of avenues. I mean, you need to be on Facebook. You need to be on LinkedIn. You need a Google page. You need right. a website. Um, we do email blasts to our customers. Sure. Um, and then you do direct mail to the ones that are not your customers yet. So the direct the EDDM is great because your postage is uh, 0.191 per piece. That is the cheapest you're going to have the post office deliver your mail. For. Twenty cents, less than twenty cents a yeah a piece. Yeah, when you think that the full class stamp is fifty five cents. Your bread and butter is business to business. Yes. Um, is it is it actually printing? I mean, Minuteman Press seems to be a Printing. Yeah, is that it, where it is, is printing, um, as long as you consider digital printing and press printing. Digital printing is when you have the full color. Right. Um, press printing is when you're printing in one or two colors. Um, and really, a, a lot of businesses are moving now into uh, their logos are more than one or two colors. Mm. Um, and so then you pretty much automatically are on the digital press. And is there, I mean, you do, I'm assuming you do books and like uh, annual reports for businesses, we as, do. just as you do letterheads and business cards. I know yeah. when I was doing mornings with WRNR, I know all the, the, the cards and the stationery and everything else from uh, yeah. Michael Hughes and Steve Kingston all came down here. And right, right. I still do the printing. I didn't, I had no idea that you were so diverse. Yeah, yeah. In, in what it was. Um, I, actually, in a way, it's almost a problem because. People, you know, call or email and they want a price. And there's just so many factors. You know, is it one-sided or two-sided? Is it full color? Does the fuller go, color go to the edge, meaning does it bleed? Well, then it needs to be printed on a larger piece of paper and cut down. Do you want it on glossy paper or matte paper? I mean, we have a whole list. How thick does the paper have to be? How, right, 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 the whole nine yards. Right. How long do you want it to last? I mean, a thin piece of paper isn't going to last as hard as long as a, uh, something that's on cover stock, which is what business cards are made of. But you're not a place for, I mean, maybe you are. I mean, if I need to make a quick copy to send out to a notary or send to mail out, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not coming to you. I mean, I Actually, you are coming to me. Really? I mean, where else really can you go? You can go to the um, library, but that's been closed to everybody right. for the longest time. Um, and actually, our per copy piece is cheaper than the library. Um, so, yeah, we send faxes for people. Uh, a lot of times, like for insurance and things Fax, like that. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> so we send faxes. Um, we do a lot of Christmas letters when it's time for Christmas or graduation cards, things okay. like that. So I mean, we still are doing things for the individual, but obviously, an individual is not going to need five hundred of something. And that's where you, you know, in the volume is where you make your money. And, that, and that, that, that's your sweet spot, I guess, yes. when you when you get that. Tell me about, I mean, technology. How long have you, you've been in this since you said? 2002 is when we purchased the franchise. Okay, so we're going on almost 20. Oh, if you're talking like that, when I purchased the business, we had a new color printer. And it printed five copies a minute. It was a big deal. That's impressive. <laughs> That's impressive. I mean, back then, we um, we had a camera, and we would take um, pictures of the artwork. We would set up the artwork, um, cutting and pasting with glue. I mean, the industry has, has just changed dramatically, even from when we purchased the franchise. I mean, they have presses that are manually running and running paper through them and putting ink on mm -hmm. on the paper. Mm -hmm. But the process of setting that up now is all pushing buttons, isn't it? And yes. looking at screens? Yes. Yes. The the software that they've come up with, 
But yeah, I mean, software didn't even exist when I purchased the business to do this kind of artwork. We were just getting into Macs and PCs and, and things like that. I mean, obviously the technology has changed within within you here, and the internet barely existed when you when right. you when you stepped into here. I know that was back when I had my travel agency, and it was it was it was a dicey period that whole early two thousands mm-hmm. to figure out how what was going on. Um, how do we interact with you now? I mean, do we? I mean, I I would imagine gone are the days where I I bring in. A piece of paper and... Oh, no, we still get that, too. Um, you know, it, and actually that helps uh, to have the customer, like, this is kind of what I was thinking that it should look like. You know, their flyer or their business card or whatever. They kind of roughly draw it out. Um, but people get through to us by email, especially if they're already a customer. Then they email us directly sure. and say, I need another 500, things like that. Um, or they go to our website uh, and they can ask for a quote or they can send files to us that way. And so if they're really large files, especially like we do signage as well, so posters and things like that, that is really right. large file sizes. Um, and something like that, you need to have an FTP site to send that artwork. Okay. And that's some. Um, and, and again, your regular customers are just say, any another. 5,000 pieces of letterhead or mm-hmm. and 10 business cards with this or 100 business cards with this name or something like that. Yes. That's neat. Now, you do the design itself as well? We do. Um, I have... Now, who, now who's, who's the designer in this business? Not me. <laughs> Not me at all. Um, I'm a good editor. I can look at something and say, yeah, that's something, and give suggestions. Mm-hmm. But the creative side, I'm not strong on that. Um, and normally it would be Cheryl. Right now, Ann is working here. She's helping us out. Cheryl uh, went in for open heart surgery in the end of January. And so she will be back, um, well, we sure hope by the end of this month. Um, she's doing really well. And Cheryl has been with Minuteman for, gosh, 35 years, 36 years now. Oh, wow. She started with the first owner of the Minuteman franchise here in Annapolis, and I am the third owner of this. So this dates back, wow, this dates back yeah, they three, did an three, article three, about three plus her. decades. Yeah. Well, the website is annapolis.minutemanpress.com, right? Yes. And that's, there's nothing funny to spell in there or anything? Not <laughs> I mean, if you live in Annapolis. If you right. don't live in Annapolis, this might be a right. little hard. Right. But that's, uh, and types of documents that people can send you i mean i'm assuming they can upload a word document or a pdf or you can um but the problem with sending something like a word document is that document is always pulling information from your computer so when you set up your computer you told it my my standard fonts are arial and you know times roman which which is fine but if you pick something funny because you, you like the look of that font, it's not going to come across in Word to me unless I happen to have that, that font loaded okay. in my machine. So the best thing to do is to always turn it into a PDF because that, that freezes it in time and that allows us to print it. Right. And but then and then again, if you were to if I uploaded a PDF to you, I mean, you're not able to edit that if there's a problem. I mean, then you'd be calling me back and say, hey, you misspelled... Um, it depends on what kind of package you created that PDF oh, okay. in, the original artwork. If you did it in Word, no, I'm, I'm not going to be able to change that. If you actually used, like, InDesign, a, a graphics program, mm-hmm. uh, there's a very good chance that we would be able to edit that to pick PDF. it out and edit it out. Mm-hmm. Okay, pretty neat. Yeah. So what is the largest job that you've ever done? I mean, maybe it's in quantity or maybe it's in size. Well, actually, we just delivered the last batch this morning. We did our second run of 50,000 flyers for the department health department for the vaccine. Okay. So that, that black and white uh, sheet that they right. hand out when you get your uh, shot, we printed those. That makes me happy that the health department yes. in the county is just, you know, local business yes. and not, not jobbing this out to some big shop and... You know, Baltimore or Washington or... or. Absolutely. Um, I I am a huge believer in uh, shopping local and keeping the money locally. Because if you aren't spreading it around town, then those people don't have money to come and order something from me. So 
our inclination is always to use somebody as local as possible to Annapolis. Yeah, now that and that's what it is. I mean, I've always said that all business really starts on Main Street, and let's take Main Street Annapolis out of the equation. But whatever Main Street is, it could be Lincoln Court here as we are. It could be West Street. It could be. It doesn't matter. But I mean, it's the small locally owned businesses that really make the economy in any market continue to churn. Right. Uh, right. You know, the, the CEO of Nordstrom, rest in peace, is not coming to Sin or going over to, uh, you know, get a slice of pizza or a, a mm-hmm. pie at uh, Chris's. Right. And that's where the importance of supporting local is. How did you guys make out during the pandemic? I, met, I know that you probably did okay because there's an awful lot of communication that needed to go out when this that's happened. That's true. And we did a lot of um, uh, PPE uh, things, the, the sneeze guards and the face masks, um, s- labels and stickers and things like that, uh, floor right. uh, uh, labels like stand here. <laughs> um, and we did a lot of that kind of items. But, uh, yeah, we certainly, we were down. We were certainly down. And we were blessed to uh, get the PPP uh, money. Mm-hmm. And I went in for our second round as well. Um, it, it's fantastic. I mean, I was able to keep my staff, all my staff, on board. Um, now, things were, were slow, but, you know, in general, how people are, I mean, you fill up the day as best you can and you know you work a little slower because it's a slow day yeah it's, it's slow tense and stressful right. i mean right. <laughs> you know it's 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 been a tough year for everybody but yeah. i especially and, and again it goes back to the whole supporting local but i mean you've got these local businesses that are struggling okay men and men press was slow okay so you you need and and I guess, you know, your corporate clients, a lot of them had closed down temporarily, put yeah. people at home. Maybe they weren't, you know, doing that type of communication. They weren't doing conferences. They weren't doing trainings. Um, and so they weren't going to conferences themselves and have booths with marketing materials right. and uh, promotional products. All that kind of stuff stopped. I mean, we, we do the printing for a lot of the restaurants in town um, and, you know, well, on one hand, we did a lot of black and white, you know, 20 pound sheets sure. because people were throwing them away right 20 away. 20 pound sheet, that's just, is that just a regular photocopy? Uh, that's, type? well, that's what you would buy for your home machine. Um, that's what we print black okay. and white on. It's a, it's a light, okay. um, standard kind of. Our color copies oh. go on 70 pound paper. Okay. So it's a really nice paper. But that's, uh, yeah, and I mean, the restaurants. Yeesh. Tough for the really, really a brutal year yeah. for them. As and well. I and I try to, um, you know, I I gave them good pricing for the same thing. Well, again, that's that's I think they're hurting them. It, it, it comes back to you. Yeah. Uh, as, as with life, sometimes it comes back and bites you in the <laughs> bites yeah. you in the butt. And sometimes it comes back in spades and 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 rewards you. And I think that you know local businesses sticking together is is what it's about. I mean, you sit there and you see uh, Monica Alvarado worked with the Feed Anne Arundel, taking the local businesses and getting them to local restaurants preparing meals and feeding those that are in need, raising money and everything else. You've got different things like that. And I think that was a great way to take, you know, inarguably was a horrible year and turn a couple little good things out of it. Um, I've seen some, you know, some good stories come out of COVID. I mean, I wouldn't want to ever repeat them again. I Uh, hope, I hope uh, people get their shots and uh, we get back. Yeah. Going again. It's 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 about time. We need to be smart about it. We need to be careful about it Mm -hmm. and do it. We do need to support local businesses. What is your ideal customer? Who are you looking for? You said you're looking business to business. Just any business that has any kind of a printing need, whether it be signage or. Well, you know, we're not supposed to uh, uh, say we can do printing for every anybody, but a small business business, maybe that um, doesn't have a lot of energy or time to commit to marketing materials or forms or things like that. Um, I think we pride ourselves in really being helpful. Um, we get a lot of artwork in that's not quite set up right, uh, that that we try to fix or we try to explain how to fix it, you know, to whoever's designing that artwork. Um, we don't let things go out that aren't going to reflect well on that business. Well, it's got your name on it, too. It does. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I would hate it if it was a bad piece and someone said, oh, who printed this for you? And then they would say us. And it's like, oh. Right, right. And I imagine throughout your experience with dealing with all of the businesses that you're 
you're getting the best practices too to give to a new client to come in. I mean, you know, you, you say you deal with a lot of restaurants and say mm-hmm. I'm opening up a new restaurant and looking to do a menu. I mean, I'm sure you probably sure, we recommend would sit there uh, and say, hey, you know, I think this, you know, you want to, you know, it could be something stupid. I, I was reading a sneaky marketing uh, article on how restaurants do it and where they get rid of the uh, the decimal points because that automatically makes people think dollars. Oh. So you'll see like, and it was how they market wine when they sell it and how they can guide the, the way they price it and so yeah. on and so forth. So you, you know, you don't want to buy the cheap one, but you, right. you, you know, you wouldn't buy this, the $40 glass of wine, but you know, that $20 one is good, but even though, you know, and, and yes. they, they yes. get rid of the decimal points and the dollar signs because that gets you thinking, you know, I mean, that's, some, yeah. that's the types of things that I imagine that you pick up as you look at all the different businesses that flow through here, you know, the, you probably have a giant binder in the back full of best practices of what to do. Um, I wouldn't say we, uh, we certainly we keep a whole drawer full of uh, samples of things. You know, if people are like, well, I need a form, you know, and then we pull out a couple of forms and go, and then they're like, yeah, something like that, but I need these columns and rows and things. Um, you know, we, we can help them and you know, give them something to get started on. What's the most unusual thing you print? What would really surprise me? Uh, although I was surprised about clothing and... and you know, until until the you know the coronavirus came around, I would have thought it would be uh, labels for the the floor, you know. Until now, people really didn't see that, and I I always thought those were a great way to market because nobody really does anything, and so much of the floor is available to you, so you can really market a lot by putting um, labels down that pull off cleanly, you know, when you're done, and and now. Now we're familiar with it because we all see the little stand here. Right, you know, right, right. With a little arrow, walk this way, walk yeah. that way, and it says, okay, that's... What was unusual is they did try to direct you down rows, up and down the rows. Mm-hmm. And so I'm a rule follower, so I, I follow the little arrows and, you know, go where I'm supposed to go. And then it's really annoying when somebody's coming down when you're supposed to go up. I do it until it's not convenient. <laughs> I mean, I'll be going, I, I totally do get started that way. And then I, I get to the point where, like, the nuts, it's typically in the, where I shop in my supermarket, the nuts are 12 feet off of where I end up being. I norm, that's the only thing I need in that aisle. Yeah, I and know. I'm like, okay, I'm going to run down there and grab the nuts. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> And know. I, I've been even known to back up an aisle. <laughs> Just the one facing the right direction. <laughs> Not to get yelled at. Oh, that's a good one. Um, and then, you know, if you're going to do unusual There are so many opportunities when you look at promotional products, um, which, you know, are are gifts to your customers or, you know, gifts to entice new customers to come in. Um, And, boy, there are some unique things out there, you know, besides the hand sanitizer and and things like that. Um, I mean, drinkware, there's all kinds of drinkware. I like the new ones they have now where the can fits in there all you know, all together. Right, right. You know, okay. not just soft, but really protects it all and, and everything. Um, stemless wineware. I love the stemless stuff. That's great. Less chance to knock it over. Yeah. What's on the future for Miniman Press? Do you... Um, well, actually, the the next piece of equipment that we're going to purchase is a latex a wide format machine. And so... Um, What's that do? That will do better outdoor signage. Because it'll be able to print on vinyl and be outside, it's it, you're able to uh, finish it right away. Meaning, I can cut it right away. Don't it doesn't have to worry about smearing anything. Um, you can do banners and core plus signs and. It's like um, be like the realtor signs or the uh, yeah. the yeah. the politician signs that that will be doting the, the scene in the next couple of months. I'm we sure we will. We will. Yes. Um, so we're, I'm excited about that. Previous to that, our newest machine was the um, the heat press, and that was to do the apparel and the face masks and things. And like the that. binders and, mm-hmm. and and different things. Like yeah, that. you can do you can a lot of do a lot of things with the heat transfer vinyl. And that's all individually done, right? I mean, those are all individually. I mean, you done. can't like lock the door and push print five hundred and no, let, not at all, <laughs> not at all. It's it's manual all the way, um, and because of that, it's really not economic hole for someone to do one or two or three of something mm-hmm. you know it's it's just way too much 
expense. Just an interesting question. I mean, technology in the home has gone through the roof. I mean, we obviously know we can work from home pretty effectively. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've got printers and we've got computers and we've got, got everything. Do you ever see a time, and obviously this is probably way beyond our time, where a printing shop, which is as old as time, if you will. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is Ben Franklin did the first press, didn't he? Gutenberg. Yeah. Um, is there a time where this is going to be obsolete? I think maybe at some point, but I think it's hard to define that because we're tied to it because of when we grew up. Um, it, and also some of it depends on what your learning style is. I, I'm not an auditory person. Like, I do watch the Zoom things and, and the trainings and things like that, but I really learn from, um, from writing down. So when, when I listen to something, I take a screenshot, I and put it in Word, and I take notes underneath. So I need, I need, to, I need paper. Um, I don't really like to read things on the computer unless they're junk things. Anything real, um, you know, like I sit on some boards, I need to print it off. You know, I need to highlight it and I need to, I need to read it. But people are going to be different and they're going to be trained differently, you know, down the road. So it might be. Who knows? Yeah. Well, I can't picture a time where there wouldn't be, you know, certainly, if, you know, you may not be doing the, you know, Christmas card letters. Um, but, you know, any kind of a business needs something. I can't see yes. that somebody wouldn't need the quantity. Yes. Now, and I mean, they're, let's face it, when I'm sitting at home railing off, you know, color prints off of my color inkjet printer, yeah. you know, one or two pages is cool. But if, if all of a sudden I need 10 or 15, yeah. now I'm thinking, okay, so I'm going to go through two tanks of this, you know, stupid HP ink that's going to yeah. cost me. Yeah. I, people, people don't really recognize that how expensive it is for them to print on their home printers if you're doing one or two it is fine um but actually we're probably less expensive to come in you know on our paper using our inks and be done with it well yeah and you and you bought the bought the bigger better better printer um yeah to it's, be, to it's be. almost the whole width of the room so it's um it's a, it's a great little operation here yeah it's, uh, we really like it and I kind of even like the smell in here. I love the smell. It's, I love the smell. It's sort of like... Um, but I really, I like the smell of gasoline, too. Gasoline? Uh-huh. I do, too. Well, you were probably that same kid like me. Like, I'll go down to the office and get the mimeographs <laughs> because you could sniff the paper. <laughs> yeah. Except for a lot of people don't know what those are anymore. Yeah, I, I know. We just don't, totally, totally... <laughs> anybody that's under, like, 40 is going, huh? Really? You know, what, what is that? Is, what, what is that? I remember those. The old, yeah. the old oh, crank. Oh, yeah. I do things. remember those. Absolutely. Well, this is fascinating. If anybody has any kind of printing needs, and this could be paper, this could be fiber, fiberboard or foam board. Foam board, core uh, plast. You know, mm -hmm. promotional products, binders, annual reports, uh, marketing pieces, cards, direct mail. Mm -hmm. um, we just did some car signage. Uh, we do uh, magnets. Uh, we did some window signage for somebody this week. Uh, you know, that's the best part of being in this business, it's something different. Everything is different every single day, and it's not a repeat. And so it uh, stays fresh. Who's your most creative client? And you can name I names. Know. Like, say, you know, they always creative. come in with like really cool stuff. Well, I'm going to do current because I, that comes up in my mind. But Admiral Cleaners, Whitney is uh, starting a new um, new customer packet. And uh, we're doing the printing for that. And so, you know, there's an industry that was hit really hard this year. Sure. Dry cleaning. Yeah. Um, Again, and, something that I wouldn't think of, but now that you, as soon as you mentioned, I'm like, okay, well, nobody's going to work. Yeah. And you're wearing really <laughs> casual things. Um, but they dry clean and clean a lot of different, uh, you know, things. It's like they, they do that. They clean your Uggs. I was like, wow, who knew you could do that? Yeah. So, um, so she's she's working on some creative things. Um, it's interesting the artwork that we get in. Businesses are using different 
designers, either they have them in-house or they're outsourcing it. And uh, the artwork that we get is, is, is pretty good, and it's, it's fun to look at it. Annapolis.MinutemanPress.com is the place to go. What is the phone number here? 410? 263-3442. 3442. You can upload your documents. You can give them a call. And Rita is standing by with her wonderful staff to, to help you out with any kind of printing needs for sure. Again, if you've got to print something, do it locally. Do it. Uh, keep the local businesses in business. Keep them thriving. Keep them Give them, make sure they get lots of money so they can spend it back <laughs> with, every, with everybody else. Well, we certainly do. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Uh, congratulations for sticking it out and, and making it through COVID. I knocking on wood, we're getting toward the end of it. Yes. And, you know, thank you all that you've done for the community and, you know, way to make it, make it happen. And I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to talk about my business. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.